Hi, my name is Glenn Randall, and I am the juror for this year's Louisville Art Association Photography Show. We received over 600 photos uh, submitted digitally initially, and I have to say I was very impressed with the quality and diversity of the images that were submitted. So I then faced the difficult task of narrowing down the 600 photos we received to the 100 photos that we actually had room to display at the Louisville Art Center. So, simply being selected for the show means that you have already produced an outstanding work of art, even if your image did not subsequently win an award. We had, there were eight categories, so I selected a first place image in each of the eight categories. I also selected nine honorable mentions from a variety of categories, not necessarily one from each category, and I selected a best of show. Um, this was quite a challenging task and there were many uh, difficult decisions as to which images should receive an award but you know, rest assured that if you were simply uh, have an image in the show you know you've produced an outstanding work of art. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for the time and effort they put into submitting uh, for this show and I'd like to thank the Louisville Art Association for the honor of being selected as this year's juror. So this piece is called Frozen in Time. It's photographed by Kirk Fry and it's in the abstracts category. Uh, to me, what makes an image really shine in the abstracts category is if it's puzzling a little bit. It, it really makes you want to look at it deeply and try to figure out what exactly it is that you're looking at. And so this piece, which was actually, uh, Kirk told me, was taken of uh, ice at Lake Hayaha in Rocky Mountain National Park, really uh, fit that category well. This piece is called Subway Father. It was shot by Claude Beller, and it won an honorable mention in the people category. So what attracted me to it was just, obviously, the interaction between the father, his obvious concern for his child, you know, which he's carrying in a chest pack there. It's just a, a wonderful rendition of a, a candid moment there on the subway. This piece is called The Road Ends Here. It was shot by Andy Schwartz, and it received an honorable mention in the Nature Created category. This is just an outstanding landscape uh, photograph from my perspective. It's, uh, first off, it's beautifully composed with a classic S-curve there in the foreground stream. Second, it's a very dramatic landscape you know, uh, with uh, those uh, jagged pyramidal mountains. And then we have the final element of a great landscape photograph which is just absolutely spectacular light. Okay, this shot is called uh, Island in the Sky. Uh, it was photographed by Fernando Boza, and it won an honorable mention in the Nature Created category. What attracted me to this image is, is first, of course, the highly unusual perspective. It was shot with a drone, uh, presumably some hundreds of feet above the ground there. Um, the subject is Island Lake and U.S. Grant Peak in the San Juans. Uh, you know, the rich colors, dramatic landscapes, stormy late afternoon skies, you know, all combined with that unusual perspective to make this shot a winner. So this piece is called Frost Crystals. It was photographed by John Blake, and it won an honorable mention in the macro and close-up category. What attracted me to it was just the extreme delicacy of those ice crystals set against that very uh, out of focus blue and white
So this is a piece called They Only Came to Disco. It's photographed by Tom Wheeler, and it won an honorable mention in the human made category. And what attracted me to it was just the uh, undeniable and appealing quirkiness of it uh, with this long exposure at night. Uh, you can tell it's a long exposure from the long star streaks. Um, presumably the land is lit by moonlight, and uh, then there were some lights for the people, but it just has a, a wonderful sense of humor, and that's why it earned an honorable mention. Okay, this piece is called Radiate. It was photographed by Stephen Barger and it won an honorable mention in the digital manipulation category. So Stephen put together two quintessential uh, symbols of the Arctic, the aurora and a polar bear, uh, and did so beautifully. It's a spectacular photograph of the aurora, the wonderful shapes and forms, and then a very unusual lighting on the polar bear backlit by that warm golden glow. And so the combination of those two images into one uh, highly effective composite is what made this uh, worth an honorable mention. So this photograph is called Green Jay Catching Wasp. It was photographed by Judy Dressler uh, and it won an honorable mention animals and wildlife category. Frankly, it was a strong contender for the first place finish award. Um, it is just a magnificent shot uh, captured in flight, single frame, of this bird you know, catching a wasp in midair. Uh, you know, just the, both the wasp and the bird are sharp, you know, the outspread wings, you know, the perfect form of the feathers, you know, everything about it you know, really is a, it's, it's quite a remarkable capture. So this piece is called The Only Constant is Change. It was shot by Fernando Boza and it earned an honorable mention in the Nature Created category. It's actually a shot of Comet Neowise setting over Shiprock, which is a major formation in uh, northern New Mexico. Comet Neowise was the brightest comet to come through our solar system since Comet Hill bought back in 1997. And uh, Fernando uh, did a, a magnificent job of capturing a comet in perfect relationship to Shiprock just a little bit of last light on uh, the form rock formation and the beautifully rendered comet, including you know, both the, uh, the ion and the gas tail. This piece is called Amoebas. It was photographed by Gregory Holden, and it won first place in the still life and abstracts category. And abstract indeed it is. It's very intriguing shapes and forms, uh, and yet it's, it's quite puzzling you know, what could possibly have created these shapes and forms. So that and the, uh, the combination of uh, interesting colors uh, made it the first place winner in this category. This image is called Flower Girls. It was photographed by Mike McGinnis, and it won first place in the people category. Uh, to me, what is so intriguing about this image is the many questions that it evokes and the many stories that you spin out in your mind wondering exactly what is going on. Uh, you know, it's a, a very colorful uh, and intriguing in that it raises the question of, why are all these women pushing flowers in blue carts, all heading in the same direction? Are they going to work in a flower market? I mean, it also raises interesting questions about the relationships between all the different women who often seem to know each other. Uh, there's a wide diversity of expressions from really 
quite solemn and serious to laughing and joking and uh, all these elements came together to, to make a, a winner in the people category. So this image is called Stony Pass. It's by Carl Finocciaro, and it won first place in the nature created category. I have been photographing professionally and obsessively in Colorado since 1993, and this is an image that I would be proud if, if I had managed to make it and had it in my collection. It has a number of very strong attributes. First off, of course, it's just a beautiful field of wildflowers, but it's not just one species. It's actually a mix of different species of, of wildflowers, which is not as easy to find as you might think. Uh, it's beautifully lit. Perfect timing on the sun star as the sun drops below the horizon. And it's technically extremely well executed. This is a very large print, perhaps 30 by 50 at a guess. And it is razor sharp from all the way from the closest flowers all the way up to the skyline, which is uh, not an easy thing to achieve. So between the aesthetic quality and the technical quality, this uh, well deserved to be, uh, to be first place in this category. This image is called Gray Hair Streak Butterfly or Montana by Susan Swain Thompson, and it won first place in the close ups and macro category. It's, uh, what it has appealed to me about this image is, is first off, the colors uh, where the orange flower, uh, the colors in the orange flower are echoed in the colors in the butterfly's wings, and then the whole image is set against this very soft, out of focus background. And the colors of the background are co very complementary to the colors in the image. It's also very well executed technically with the, the wings of the butterfly uh, parallel to the camera sensor, which gives full depth of field, so the whole butterfly is sharp. So uh, everything can combined in this image, color, composition, form, choice of subject, and just technical skill to, to make a winner. This image is called uh, Comet Neowise over St. Mallow. It's photographed by Claudie Courtney, and it uh, won first place in the human-made category. Uh, what appealed to me about it was, you know, first off, you know, it's a beautiful shot of Comet Neowise, which uh, came through our solar system back in the summer of 2020. And it's, but it also is, you know, it's not just a shot of the comet, it's positioned beautifully in relation to St. Mallow Chapel, which is along the Peak to Peak Highway uh, near Rocky Mountain National Park. So the, the chapel is beautifully lit, the sky is a rich blue, uh, and the comet you know, really stands out against that dark blue sky. And so putting all those elements together uh, you know, created a, a very strong photograph. This image is called Portrait of Vietnam. It was created by Evelyn Espinoza and it won first place in the digital manipulation category. To me, what really struck me about this image was the intricacy of the compositing work and the intriguing nature of each of those elements of the composite. The more you look at this image, the more you see, the more elements of, uh, you know, that are characteristic of, of Vietnam photographer put together into this you know, really highly intriguing uh, photograph. This photograph is called Grizzly Tango. It was photographed by Stephen Kratka and it won first place in the animals and uh, wildlife category. Uh, 
it is clearly just an astonishing photograph, an amazing photograph of these two grizzly bears confronting each other in a, uh, a pond or river. Um, you know, it, it speaks for itself. The drama, the action, you know, the beautiful animals, you know, the water flying is just a really strong and compelling photograph of these two bears. This piece is called Central Diner. It was made by, really created by Sarah Drower, and it won first place in the alternative processes and manipulation category. And indeed, it is uh, the epitome of that category. It, it appears to have started life as a photograph, um, which uh, Sarah then embellished with scraps of fabric and beads of different shapes and colors, uh, all of which combined to create this a very intriguing image of uh, this diner, uh, somewhere that uh, you'd love to have a burger. This image is called Alien Throne. It is by Carl Finocciaro. And it won Best in Show, so it is, of all the images submitted, this is, in my view, the very, the very most, uh, the very best image, the most compelling image. Uh, it struck me for a number of reasons. One is, it's a beautiful photograph of the Milky Way. It's very well planned, uh, with the Milky Way positioned there, just to the right of the alien throne. It's very well photographed, with rich detail in the Milky Way, and very well edited. Uh, beautiful, deep blue sky. And then the, the light on the land is also very intriguing, uh, perfectly picking out all the different shapes, uh, and contours, and hollows, and buttresses, and buttes, and towers there, uh, both Alien Throne itself, as well as all of the, the features around it. So to me, it was the image that really stood out the most and uh, fully deserved to be best in show.